there is Mike Holmgren, the Super Bowl championship in Green Bay, took the Seahawks to the Super Bowl three years ago. This is his last season. Bill Belichick's Patriots uh, seemingly always part of the playoff picture, but they trail by a game coming in today. The kick down to Hobbs. Hobbs doesn't get to the 20-yard line. David Hawthorne led the special teams charge for Seattle. Out comes uh, Matt Castle replacing the injured Tom Brady. Ever improving this young man. He endeavors to bounce back from his roughest game, especially that second half last week against the Steelers. New England's offensive line ever solid, starting every game since a rookie young pro bowler Logan Mankins at guard. And pound for pound is tough. The wide receiver is there in the NFL. 185-pound slot man Wes Walker, second in the NFL with 84 catches. That's Walker lined up to the right side as Castle gives it to Sammy Morris. And Morris for two to the 20. Tackled by Deion Grant, the safety man for Seattle. And here's the defense. The Hawks uh, deploy a 4-3 base. Inside pressure from second-year defensive tackle Brandon Meebane leads with four sacks, 10 quarterback hits. At linebacker, three years in the league. Three Pro, Bowl, pro Bowls for middle linebacker Lofa Tatupu. His dad played with the Patriots. On the back line, second-year corner Josh Wilson has an interception TD. Uh, the Seahawks are going to need a big play on defense to hold off New England today. On second and eight, here comes the noise. Castle under pressure, throws to Welker, complete, and he takes it to the 29, and a first down. So Welker with his 85th catch of the season. He's second only to Andre Johnson of the Houston Texans. Yeah, this is very much like a college spread offense, almost like watching a Texas Tech where Wells Welker came from. When they get in that empty back situation, it's rush the quarterback at your peril because everyone knows when to snap off off their routes for the quick, easy completion like that. No one in the league has had more catches the last three years than Walker. First down, the handoff is inside to Sammy Morris, and Morris draws a crowd of Seahawk blue. Rocky Bernard, Robert Rocky Bernard from Texas A&M leads the charge along with Brandon Mabane. You know, Dick, we, we talked about there being no no Matt Hasselbeck, also no Walter Jones at left tackle when they get the ball, and it's up to the Seattle defense, and the Seattle defense, for all the injuries you've mentioned, this defense has been the biggest disappointment of the year for the Seattle Seahawks, but they're also the key to this game. There's Walter Jones. It's the key to this defense. The key to the game is this defense performing against Matt Castle. Yeah, they've underperformed. There's a lot of talent, including that middle backer, Tutupu. On second down, Castle a ton of time, and Walker circling underneath, but brought down at the 34, a good open field tackle by cornerback Marcus Trufant. That'll bring up third down at about six for New England. You know Matt Castle is going to throw a little, a few of these short ones, Dick, because he's trying to set up things down the field. He's getting a good look at how they're treating Randy Moss. That means, and that's going to tell him what he'll be able to get with Welker, what he'll be able to get with Gaffney. If he wants to take a chance, he's going to go after Moss. Westfield, and this uh, crowd lets the opposition know they're here. 67,000 strong. Castle under pressure, now throws it off. Incomplete. Randy Moss over the middle. No, is uh, Jabbar Gaffney on the checkoff underneath. And it's a punning situation now for the New England Patriots. It's interesting that New England and Belichick last year won 18 straight games in that phenomenal year. This season, they've never been able to win more than two in a row, and they're coming off a defeat to Pittsburgh last week. They've had three real bad losses, and they've already turned the ball over 20 times, Dick. Five times in the second half last week. That tells you all you need to know about what the difference was. Backpedaling at the 13-yard line. A 53-yard boot by Hanson when we come back. Center Wallace. So Seneca Wallace, the 28-year-old, played his college ball at Iowa State. It's his fifth start. He's one and three. Good numbers. Five touchdowns, only one interception. He's short at only 5'11. And has the threat to run when in trouble. Maurice Morris is his running back, and Wallace throws on first down, complete to his tight end, John Carlson, the rookie from Notre Dame, who has played very well all season long. 
The Seahawks offensive line is an injury disaster. Right tackle Sean Locklear moves to left tackle, replacing Walter Jones. Center Steve Vallis starts his second NFL game. They've moved them all around the pieces. Maurice Morris gets to start at running back over Julius Jones. Morris averaging 4.9 yards a carry. Eight yards on the first down throw. And here in the goal, almost intercepted on the flat pass. As cutting in front was Brandon Merriweather, the safety from Miami of Florida, read it well, intended for Deion Branch. You always hear about receivers coming back to the ball and defensive backs breaking on the ball. Beautiful example of Brandon Merriweather. As soon as that ball is released, he's breaking at the ball, and the receiver is not coming back to it. You do that, you're going to give that defensive back an extra few feet of time to get to the football. That's an interesting matchup in that branch when he was traded to Seattle. The Patriots got a number one pick, and that's big Leonard Weaver, the fullback, booming out to the 36-yard line. That number one draft pick the Patriots got in the Deion Branch trade was Brandon Merriweather. Not real complicated, right straight up the middle. Just create a crease, let her fly, get a double team on Will Fork. You see Teddy Bruschi gets caught in the wash inside and there's no pursuit from the backside by the rookie Gerard Mayo. So it's like there's only one linebacker inside and they take advantage. Safety James Sanders, the tackle, first down out across the 35, right back to Morris this time to the 40-yard line. Mike Vrabel with a tackle. Defense for the Patriots, 3-4, uh, features three number one draft picks up front, including Richard Seymour, looks for his sixth Pro Bowl in his 12th season. Peripatetic veteran Mike Vrabel, he's got uh, 54 career sacks and 10 touchdown catches on offense in the secondary. Uh, it was announced just an hour before kickoff that rookie Jonathan Wilhite will start at corner for Delta O'Neill. And there's the veteran ageless one, Junior Seau, signed back with the Patriots on Thursday. Filled the void left by injuries at linebacker. Roosevelt to Colvin also. It's Morris going outside this time. Has a first down and more to the 46 of New England. And early on, uh, Mike Holmgren's running offense working very well. Oh, beautiful block by Ingram, 84. Beautiful, beautiful job working against Mayweather. You saw him take advantage on the break on the ball and almost get a pick. Now watch the job that Ingram does on blocking the second-year man. Perfect job of blocking. That sets up the run down the field. That's gorgeous. That's nice execution. 14-yard gain, and now it's Morris right back on a quick snap to the 42-yard line. Vrabel, the tackler, this drive the opening series of the game for the Seattle Seahawks, starting back at their own 13. They've arrived now at the Patriot 42. Hey, in order for Mike Holmgren's offense to open up the sort of early Christmas present that can be the Patriots' defense in the right circumstances, the linebackers inside and the safeties have to be pressured. You can do that with Carlson, and you can do that with the running game, and then you can afford to go outside for the big pass. Play action on second and six. A throw over the middle is complete. Tight end Carlson, another catch, and another Seattle first down. Gerard Mayo, the linebacker, rookie, makes the tackle. And that, to me, is one of the bright spots for the Patriots this year has been Gerard Mayo, but he's working against a tight end that really has an understanding early on. He played at Notre Dame, like you said, Dick, but early, Deion Grant, the safety for Seattle, says this guy has so many questions. He comes to me with questions about defense, questions about body positioning, and you can tell he understands the dead spots in the zones. That's his 40th catch that you've just seen, and here sweeping is Leonard Weaver, and he's down inside the 30-yard line as we go to Randy's crosstalk. I talked about those linebackers, and to me, the linebackers really mean Gerard Mayo and company now. The rookie has been a huge impact player, and when he's there and he's making tackles on the run, he's pressuring on the, on the defensive side, maybe even against the pass, he can really make this defense a whole different kettle of fish to go against. If you can challenge him, if you can make him look like a rookie, Go after him with a tight end in the running game. Makes a difference. Old kettle of Dungeness Crab, you say, here yeah. in Seattle. Well, instead of throwing him around here. <laughs> Second and three. Give it to underneath to Maurice Morris. And Morris is a yard shy of a first down. That'll bring up third down for Seattle. Richard Seymour and Mike Wright, along with Vrabel, you know, on the tackle. Hey, you mentioned Walter Jones. We talked about him not being in in the disheveled offensive line that hasn't really been together much. 
it tells me Vince Wilfork and Richard Seymour have to dominate in this game. They're playing against people that are not starters. And if you can't dominate then, you've got to answer some questions from the coaches. Third and a short two. Up the middle, Weaver. He's got the first down as he nudges it inside the 25. Seymour and Wright. Mike Wright starting at defensive end today is Ty Warren injured inactive. Well, you've got to think the Seattle Seahawks football team turned on the tape and they saw the New England Patriots really get their backsides handed to them in the second half of that game. You can talk about the turnovers, but Fitz Pittsburgh physically beat this football team up last week. Weaver stays in at tailback. Fourth year runner from Carson Newman. Wallace steps up, scrambles, 20. He can run, can't he? To the 11, first down again. What a drive by this young man. Seneca Wallace and the Seahawks are now camped just outside the tent of the Patriots. Pretty simple, you get the coverage, you're gonna drop, you're gonna drop, you're gonna rush, you're gonna drop, and suddenly the entire inside of this defense opens up. Watch the crossing, there's the opening. Nice read. That's why I said kind of good news, bad news to start the game with Hasselbeck. Yeah, he's one of the best quarterbacks, has been, but he hasn't been healthy, and, and this kid and his running ability really added new dimension. 13 yards on that scramble, 76-yard drive now for the Seahawks. And trouble here is Maurice Morris is caught in the backfield and dropped for a four-yard loss. Mike Vrabel with Brandon Merriweather coming up from the second area, helping out on the tackle. No second and long now for Seattle, and the first time that Seneca Wallace has had to deal with this uh, negative down and yard situation. Yeah, you know, it has a little sunshine coming out. We haven't seen sunshine in the last couple of days. What is that shadow out there? Morris, fake to him. Wallace to the end zone. Touchdown! Dion Branch, the expatriate, with the first score of the game. And he beat the man that was part of the trade. Branch to Seattle, Brandon Merriweather, who was the number one pick the Seahawks gave up to New England. Wow, did Dion Branch separate from Merriweather at the end? Look at the gap between the two right here. And it really happened in the last three or four yards. I don't think it was a push off, but Merriweather keeps going. Dion Branch just cuts off the route. You can see the rubberized material of the field turf come up on the scrape of the toe by Dion Branch. The extra point by Olindo Mare and the Seahawks on their first possession impressively drive the length of the field to take the lead 7-0. Remnant of the World's Fair, the Space Needle here in Seattle as the Seahawks celebrate an 87-yard drive in 13 plays, a 14-yard touchdown catch by Deion Branch. It's his first touchdown of the season, injured earlier in the year, been plagued by injuries. That's only his 14th catch. Kick comes down by Mari, and Hobbs knocks it down and takes the touchback. Beautiful move by Deion Branch to free himself, and Wallace on the money. 14 yards and the first score of the game. Second possession, New England trailing 7-0. They start from the 20. Kevin Falk with Castle. Castle working from the shotgun. Of course, Falk, an excellent receiver. Safety blitz. Quick throw underneath, complete to Randy Moss for about 10. Moss's first catch and his 59th of the season. Marcus Trufant, the defender. Nice recognition by Matt Castle. If it looked easy, it's sort of because it is. As long as you see the fact that Deion Grant and Lofa Tatupu are up here, Grant's there to guard Falk one-on-one. -on -one. If, if he goes out, cover him. If he doesn't rush, good recognition by Castle and an easy one. A little push off, but hey, he's Randy Moss. You get away with that. First down at the 30. And off. Vermont Sammy Morris. And Morris hit by Julian Peterson, the three-time Pro Bowler, after a gain of about three. 
You know, Dick, a little bit different look. They've got on the other side Benjamin Watson at tight end. At the left tight end on that last play was Hochstein. You see come off the field. David, David Thomas, the 86, the backup tight end, was deactivated. I think it was a special teams move, basically to free some space up for specials because of the guys that are inactive. But Hochstein's going to have to play some tight end. They'll also work anywhere on the line and at fullback and goal line. That's a fake to Falk, a throw to Welker, a little flanker screen, and Welker into the open field to the 50 and stumbles down to the Seattle 47-yard line. Oh, what a beautiful job by Matt Light. The left tackle comes up just to get enough of a block to, to free Wes Welker. You'll see Light came running out. He just gets an itty-bitty piece of Josh Wilson, 26, the corner. But that's enough for Wes Welker to squeeze by him. 20-yard gain for Welker and the Patriots. Trailing 7-0, 340 left, opening quarter. Sammy Morris now the setback, fake to him, a fake to Welker. And now the long, long throw by Castle to Moss. Just misses. Moss was open deep. Well, Wes Welker, the man who has set up the Patriots in Seattle territory. Boy, he has suffered and survived two bone-jarring hits the last two games. Miami, it was the Dolphins Channing Crowder. Hmm. But how about against Pittsburgh last week? The Steelers' Ryan Clark penalized 15 yards on that hit. Walker left the game, did not return. They should have been fined. I really disagree with not making that a finable hit. Second and ten. That's Sammy Morris. Morris, the veteran, pushes the pile down to the 38-yard line. Julian Peterson and others in on the tackle. It'll be third down and a long one. Yeah, it's, it's very important for this New England Patriot football team to remind Peterson in this defense that, yes, you struggled. And you know what? We're gonna have, we have every intent of making you struggle again, but we saw in that first possession, Seattle's got the wherewithal to stop this offense. They just have to make the plays. Hochstein is lined up at tight end left, third and one, and hit in the backfield to flag down Sammy Morris and push back to the 45 is D.D. Lewis. Lewis is in for Leroy Hill. Leroy Hill uh -oh. out the leading tackler for Seattle. It's going to be defensive holding, I think, Dick. Watch. Holding, number 93, defense, five-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Holding on a running play, Craig Terrell, the fifth-year defensive tackle from Purdue. It's actually become more and more prevalent. You'll see a defensive lineman. You'll see a defensive lineman grab the first blocker. Here's Terrell working against Copen, the center. Watch Copen try to get away. He can't get away. The right arm is hooked, and he basically tackles Copen. The umpire's right there. Used to be you would never hear that call. The last couple of years, it's been emphasized more and more. So instead of fourth and two for New England, they get the first down on the penalty. At the 33 of the Seahawks. Morris in the backfield with Castle, who goes to the right flat to Welker. And Welker wrestled down at the 28-yard line by Kelly Jennings. Jennings, a former number one pick out of Miami of Florida, relinquishing his starting job to Josh Wilson this year. And he's working on that play against, uh, you know, and it's not an insult when I say this, but Wes Welker's a regular guy. You walk by dozens, if not hundreds, of Wes Welkers every day on the streets. What's exceptional about Wes Welker is he's got speed and he's got it between the ears. And a lot inside the chest. 38 yards on four catches for Welker. And here's Castle with the screen, and it doesn't work to Kevin Falk. Julian Peterson, the veteran, three times to Honolulu, showed why as he read that from the get-go. Yeah, it was very important not to bite on the, the initial instincts. And it tells you if you're on this side of the defense, hey, I've got to read it. Look at Peterson. Watch him. He's the last circle. He goes underneath with Falk, never reacts. Everyone on that side of the defense reacted or didn't react to that play perfectly. Loss of five yards, so it's third down and nine. Castle could have gotten a free five, so Seattle was late getting a player off the field. Walker now slot left, Castle under pressure. He's being dragged down, throws anyway, incomplete. 
Walker again almost made a sensational scraping catch off the field turf as Rocky Bernard kept chasing Castle right on his heels and had him going down as he threw the ball. And he buys himself the time by scrambling right. He feels Rocky Bernard. He feels Josh Wilson, the corner, splits him from the backside. And I know it was a tough catch, but man, you got to try to bring that in when your quarterback takes that kind of hit and buys that time. So out comes Steven Gostowski, a 50-yard attempt. It would be his longest of the year if he makes it. It's plenty long, and it is good. Gostowski's longest of the season as a Patriot. He hit 152, a Gillette Stadium record a couple years ago. So the Patriots salvage three on the drive, but trail here in Seattle late in the first quarter, 7-3. Back in Seattle, final seconds opening quarter, 7-3, Seahawks lead it. And Gostowski after the 50-yard field goal, roots this one out. It's Josh Wilson. He leads the NFL seven times, 40 yards or more on a kickoff return, but not this time out across the 25 to the 26, where Ray Ventrone made the tackle. And welcome back to Seattle. Dick Enberg and Randy Cross. Bob Monsbach, our producer, Suzanne Smith. In the director's chair, Seahawks and these enthusiastic fans, they are terrifically loyal, aren't they? A team that has lost five in a row. Should they lose today, Seattle would match their longest losing streak since 1994. Seneca Wallace for Hasselback dumps it off in the flat. That's complete to the fullback Weaver out to the 30-yard line. Gain of four. Gary Guyton, the rookie linebacker from Georgia Tech with the tackle. And Seneca Wallace at first drive, Dick. Not only the complete the good short ones, he actually added a few yards of his own running, and they ran the ball 58 yards in that first quarter. The execution on that first drive does not bode well. This New England defense had better button this up or Seattle and Seneca will put some points on the board. Seneca got his name from a character in General Hospital. There's a screen to Dion Branch out to the 37, and that's going to be good enough for a first down. So this first quarter, very positive for the 2-10 and 10 Seahawks. They lead it 7-3. We'll return to Seattle after these messages. You're watching the... Patriots owner Robert Kraft, his son Jonathan, they're studying the program. 7-3 the score as we open the second quarter in Seattle. The Seahawks with the first down at their own 37-yard line. And Seneca Wallace pumps, throws deep for Branch incomplete. Well, a reminder, Thursdays on CSI and this Thursday... and then the handoff to Mo around the corner 40 and 46 yard line before brought down by Teddy Bruski and James Sanders. How about that run? I, I love the first little foray inside. He sort of took a sniff, looked in there and went, oh no, it doesn't smell good in there. I'm going to go outside. Looks like a little bit more fresh air out here and he finds lots of fresh air out on the outside and quite a few yards. Knee down at the 45. It'll be Third down and two. Morris stays in. Wallace quick throw on the flat. Complete. This to Bobby Ingram and a first down at the 49 of New England. Brandon Merriweather picked on again. You know, this is classic Bill Walsh by way of Mike Holmgren kind of approach to offense. And he's if he was in the mood, you get him up on the toes and start bouncing because this is just like the fighter. He's jabbing and he's jabbing and he's moving and, and the game plan right now is perfect to keep the Patriots off guard. There really is a nice energy about the Seattle offense, isn't it? Here's uh, Morris again. No, yes it is. Maurice Morris who finally staggers his way down the 46 and Teddy Bruschi injured on the tackle. 
has not yet gotten to his feet. Oh, he's hurting. That doesn't leave you in a good position. Remember, he got hit by his own player here, but they brought Junior Seau in this week. They brought Roosevelt Colvin in this week. I think as backups, as guarantees, they didn't want to have to use him, but mm. Bruski takes a shot right on the left knee. Bruski walked gingerly off the field, second down and six, and Wallace now goes to the right side, and it's caught by Carlson, the tight end inside the 20-yard line. Merriweather again on the coverage. And Carlson, who is developing as an outstanding tight end, this rookie from Notre Dame. Exactly what I was talking about, Dick. If you can stress this defense, not only in the linebackers, and they're down Teddy Bruski now, but you can also stress them with Carlson working against the safety Merriweather. I mean, just think of that. That's a rookie tight end leading his team in catches, leading his team in yards, and making a huge play down the field against a safety who can really run. Look who's in there for the injured Bruski, Junior Seau. Wallace using his legs, gets the corner, 20, and out of bounds at the 10. Rabel there defensively, and these fans energized by the effort. So many of the players on the field on offense are reserves for the Seahawks. Well, that's about responsibility. And Richard Seymour, yeah, he got held, but you can't let the quarterback come out on a blindside rollout like that and give him that edge. I know Seneca Wallace has unusual speed. It's why we thought he'd be a great factor against this defense, but you saw there a lack of real blazing speed on the outside of that defense. First and goal, the full 10 yards to go. Morris, the running back. Wallace throws, complete to Carlson. Touchdown, Seattle. Oh, my. Are these the Seahawks that are 2-10? and ten? It's Carlson working against Junior Seau. They got exactly the matchup they wanted inside. And, man, did it pay off. Teddy Bruski leaving the field, but there's Junior working against the rookie. Just can't get there. I tell you, this kid is something special. He was a second-round pick, 38th player to be selected. That's his fourth pare. And with two and a half minutes gone in the second quarter here in Seattle, the underdog Seahawks lead it 14-3. to Great throw again by Wallace on the money for the score. to Westfield in Seattle on the sound as the Seahawks in. and he sees a gap there and skips through to the 40 and finally pushed out of bounds at the Seattle 42 yard line by Dion Grant Hobbs a threat all season long 55 yards Back to the touchdown. There's Carlson, there's Junior Seau, and look at the space in between, because Vrabel's gonna blitz. That space is what dooms the defense. Junior Seau can never make up the space. Almost gets the hand in there, but Carlson's able to get that ball. That's that's just great game planning and an excellent put and an excellent throw by, by Seneca Wallace. Two touchdown passes by Wallace here in the first half. From the 43, Castle. To the side, complete to Randy Moss inside the 30. They're only going to mark it right at the 30-yard line, first down. There's nothing wrong with going back to what you know works. One-on-one, -on -one, Marcus Trufant working against Randy Moss. And you've got that extra yard or two pad that is the respect you have to give Randy Moss. And that's all Castle needs to fit that ball in. But if and you're going to man him up, though, Dick, you're going to have a problem down the field. And for Randy Moss, another milestone. He now has 13,000 yards in his career. Pass receptions. The give is to Sammy Morris. Bulls over a tackler. the handoff and is toppled hard 
by Josh Wilson, Wilson, who came out from the corner, and the ball did pop free in a crowd of players, and there's a lot of digging and scratching and pulling going on underneath there, and no signal yet. Castle says we've got it. You knew that ball was out when, you know, not only did you see Lamont Jordan came up with it, though, but Randy Moss, one of the last guys off the pile there, 81, was coming in to block, and he suddenly went diving over the top of the pile. Just before he gets to the ground, the ball does come out. Helmet on the ball, it's coming out. He lands on it, actually. That was uh, fortuitous for Jordan and the Patriots because he's kept the ball in his possession by smothering it with his backside. And he's lucky, too. <laughs> third, third down and one. Sneak by Castle, and he wedges it easily for the first down to the 18-yard line. Ten and a half minutes left in the first half. Seattle leading 14 to three. The Patriots, as we mentioned, have not been able to win more than two in a row, but they set a game back of the Jets, tied with Miami, Buffalo at six and six in the contentious AFC East. Jets are currently down seven nothing in San Francisco. And they're looking at the scoreboard for this score too. They have no doubt. First down, Castle. Identifying Tatufu, Tatufu's in the middle and then gets it off to Morris. Or it's uh, Lamont Jordan down to the 11-yard line. They've kind of switched the numbers that Pedro Jordan has always worn 34 with the Jets and with the Oakland Raiders. He's now at 32 and Morris carries the number 34. And they're mixing things up pretty good too, Dick. They're, they're running the ball effectively. They're throwing the ball quickly very well. And they're also getting a little bit of a different diet. Randy Moss is getting doubled by the corner in the safety. It's leaving Wes, Wes Welker wide open one-on-one. -on -one. Jordan, who's been injured most of the year, seeing some critical duty here in the second quarter. He stays in on second and short. Quick throw by Castle he is incomplete to Moss. Well covered by Marcus Trufant, who took away the inside, but a flag is down. Oh, that's, they're going to call that? Let's see what happened. Trufant might have been uh, checking underneath the... Elbow is a uh, opponent away, or was it Moss? Oh, you've got to see this. If they can't Number call this. Number 23, defense. Oh. Automatic. First down. Come on. I mean, look at the look on Mike Holmgren's face. It's, it's kind of, come on, guys. Look at the right hand of Randy Moss. It's in Trufant's chest. It's in his chest. It never leaves his chest. Look at that. I mean, it's basically... It's no harm, no foul, because they're both pushing on each other. I don't like that at all. Better served as a no call. First and goal at the two-yard line. Mike Vrabel is in at tight end. Ten career touchdown catches. Is this 11? It's a touchdown to Moss. No, no, it's Benjamin Watson deep in the end zone. Watson left free. Patrolling the back line and a touchdown for Castle and the Patriots as they answer quickly. Well, they brought Tyson DeVries was in as the H-back. He came in motion. He blocks on the back side and the tight end right in front of where DeVries was blocking. Benjamin Watson is free on the back side of the end zone. After the score, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 84 of the scoring team using the ball as a prop. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Oh, the good and the bad from tight end Benjamin Watson. The good, the touchdown catch, but now he's going to force his team to kick from the 15-yard line because of this action. Remember, you cannot use the ball as a prop. I guess even putting it under your shirt counts as a prop. Watch out for Josh Wilson now on this next return, like you said, Dick. Gostowski adds the extra point. Benjamin Watson with his second touchdown reception of the year to pull the Patriots to within four. Well, that short drive of 43 yards for the touchdown set up by the 55-yard kickoff return from Ellis Hobbs. And Augustowski, after the unsportsmanlike penalty, kicks from the 15. And it's Josh Wilson. He took one back for a touchdown last year. Starts from the 17, 30. Around the corner to the 40. 
And good field position for Seneca Wallace and Seattle. Matthew Slater, son of Jackie Slater, the All-America tackle, made the hit on special teams. 14-10 in Seattle. Five-yard penalty remains first down. That second-year guard from Georgia Tech, Mansfield Rotto. Well, the Seahawks are last in the league in possession time. You wouldn't know it by their first two possessions today, an 87, 74-yard drives to a touchdown, both on throws by Seneca Wallace. Well, they're going to be in a position to run the ball a little bit, Dick, without Bruski on the inside and Will Fork now dinged up. Will Ford, we got a report on him. Here's Duckett, and maybe that's the reason why Holmgren has gone to the big running back, Duckett. Will Fork, the big man inside at nose tackle, suffered a shoulder injury in this first half, and Bruski and Knee both are questionable. And just in case you think it couldn't get much worse with Teddy Bruschi limping around and Will Fork, now you've got Mike Vrabel down yeah. on the ground for the Patriots. Goodness. Now this is the kind of uh, rash of injuries that Holmgren in Seattle has had to assimilate this year. But Dickey comes in from the outside right here, 50. Falls on the pile and then just kind of gets bumped. The back of Roosevelt Colvin hits him on the top of the head. and You can get a little stinger out of something like that. They can't lose another linebacker. So both Roosevelt Colvin and Junior Seau just signed this week. The veterans are on the field. And that's Duckett again on second and 11 out to the 44. Gerard Mayo, the tackler. You know, remember what Sale was talking about the other night when we talked to him, Dick, or last night where he said, well, let's see, third, what was Thursday? Thursday was... was he flew to Foxborough. That right. was uh, training camp. That was training camp. Friday was preseason at practice Friday morning. He flew here on Friday night. That was the first 12 games of the year. He said Friday, the <laughs> practice, first time he's had cleats on since the Super Bowl. Third down and uh -oh. long. Wallace... Throwing complete to Ingram right at the sticks. Bobby Ingram, a great third down receiver throughout his career with the Bears, with Seattle, former Penn State star, 13th year in the league. Seneca Wallace, beautiful job, you and Bobby Ingram, because that ball was snapped, I think, a little bit before Seneca Wallace expected it. Jarvis Green was free to the quarterback and still couldn't get a hit on Seneca Wallace before he could get that ball to Ingram. First down at the Patriots 49. Seattle's offense only 30% on third downs this year, but today they're four for four. Back to Duckett, former Michigan State runner. Gets a couple of yards down to the 47-yard line. Vrabel back in the game, makes the tackle. You know, Dick, we've been talking a lot about the kid John Carlson, and what a receiver. Really has the ability to read zones well. Here he is at tight end. And, you know, it's not all perfect when you're a rookie. You've got the angle on the defensive end, and you just can't close business because Lakeven Smith won't let you in on his body. It's, it shows you that they don't come into the league knowing everything. But, man, this kid out of Notre Dame can sure catch. 6'5 and 251. Wallace throws over the middle, incomplete. That was a tough catch for Carlson. The fans wanted interference by Merriweather, no flag. I, I, I'm not too sure about that personally because I think Mr. Merriweather got arrived before the ball. Carlson presses it up, comes up. 
The left hand is wrapped around the back and then around. That's just good defense, I guess, when they don't throw the flag, but it's a little early contact. Third and eight from the 47. 14-10, Seattle with the ball and the lead under seven to go. Wallace under pressure, throws incomplete for Ingram. And he had to unload because he was going down. Lewis Sanders on a corner blitz. That yeah, was a nice delay blitz by the Patriots defense. You saw they're having sort of, they, they kept six people in to protect. Sanders came in late and put a nice smack on Seneca Wallace. So John Ryan's first punt of the day, the former kicker out of Saskatchewan. Wes Walker back inside the 10. Getting very dark here. There was a forecast for showers late afternoon. survived that unsportsmanlike contact that gave uh, Seattle good field position on the return of the 40. Spread again. Spread usually means Welker, Dick. He's in the slot left, but they go right this time to Gaffney and Jabbar Gaffney to the 14. 19 yard line Kelly Jennings the tackler and here's the NFC playoff picture with Giants losing today to Philadelphia at home Tampa Bay Minnesota Arizona the division leaders Carolina we're going to see them next week Randy mm -hmm. uh, that John Fox's team has been quietly very good all year watch out for Philadelphia if that tie comes into play and suddenly all the teams that think they can be 10 and 6 and make it lose out to a 10 5 and 1 Eagle team. Castle shouting instructions to tight end Watson. Morris the runner. He gets the handoff. And out across the 20 for a first down at the 21 is Sammy Morris, a former star at Texas Tech. That's the kind of play that sooner or later, no matter who you play, Dick, you've got to man up if you're New England. You, you've got to put it in the hands of your offensive line, and they have to physically take yards from the defense. If you continually spread out, teams won't respect your running game. Welker in motion to the inside off play action. Castle throws as he's hit incomplete to Welker. And that was the pressure from Brandon Meebane, the second-year tackle out of California. And he's done that well all season long, leading his team in quarterback hits. And unable to step into his throw was Matt Castle. Man, it's lucky for Seattle that he couldn't step into that throw because Wes Welker had done a really nice job in one on man coverage, one on one of separating from the defensive back trying to cover him. Now the game's official, NFL official in Seattle. Rain has fallen. Oh my. Now you can feel comfortable. We're at home. Second and ten. Draw play has come to uh, Kevin Falk, and Falk averaging 6.1 yards per carry, partly because in that spread offense, you're looking for the pass, and then they hand it off to Falk. And he is such unique build. You know, he's low to the ground. He's not very tall. He's very strong. But he's as versatile a back as we have in the NFL. He can block. He's wonderful at catching out of the backfield. And he runs the draw among the best in the league. Best in the league, yards per rush at 6.1. Third and three, here comes the crowd. Welker left alone in the flat, and he slips down at the 40 with a first down. Marcus Trufant downs him there. Wes Welker, he had only four catches last week because he went out with the injury in the third quarter. Hey, you know, Dick, he's a, he's a great weapon to have, especially for an unfamiliar foe. Seattle has no real point of reference, I don't think, to Wes Welker. That's an advantage to New England and most teams they play because, you know, the, the slot machine doesn't exist for a lot of time. A lot of teams, they have big physical receivers. Five catches, 50 yards for Welker. That's complete to Falk in the flat. And to Tupu with help from Brian Russell. 
Get him out of bounds across the 45 yard line. Man, Falk got those yards. He got the last three yards from the line of scrimmage were all because of Wes Walker. Lined up in the slot and did a really nice job of blocking so Falk could jump off behind him. Well, his career highest yards per rush, second most rushing TDs in his 10 years in New England and third most rushing yards. He has more career passing yards, receiving yards, than rushing yards. Morris now in on second and four. And he picks a hole and plows his way into Seattle territory with a first down. Tatupu got him down. And the clock runs to three and a half minutes left here in the opening half. Yeah, the real different thing, I think, for Mike Holmgren and Seahawks fans is the lack of the big play on the defensive side, whether it's Lofa Tatupu, Patrick Kearney's on IR now, but even coming from the defensive back like a, a Patrick Trufant or You've got to have the big play, and in years past, the defense has been good for the big play, but this year they've given up the big play. Falk in the backfield with Castle. He steps up and throws for Moss, incomplete. Trufant hustling back to knock it away. It's an interesting situation if you were down on the field because Castle, as he calls out the signals, is looking and pointing at that middle linebacker, and that middle linebacker is uh, Tatupu, and they were roommates at the University of Southern California and very close friends. And when uh, uh, Castle went to New England, he looked up uh, to Tufo's dad, Mosey, who was a great player, a blocker, a special team star with the Patriots. Man, they're golf partners, and uh, you have the feeling that they will be almost the best man at each other's wedding. Yes. 13 years Mosey Tatupu played in this league as one of the best special teamers out there. Second and ten. That's Falk in the flat. Caught by the ankles. No gain. Good defensive play by Josh Wilson on the corner. Third and ten for the Patriots with 2.42 left in the half. Yeah, you, Kevin Falk's name gets associated with some pretty significant people when you start looking at his career now. 2,000 yards rushing, 3,000 yards receiving since 2000. Look at those names. Now, you're surprised maybe to see Kevin Falk, but tell me you're not stunned as a fan when you read down and go, Michael Pittman? He quietly had some good years with the Buccaneers, didn't he? All right, third and ten. Crowd tries to help out. Man, and how. And Castle runs out of time, so we'll spend one of his three timeouts it comes with 209 left in the half and seattle leading by four yeah bill belichick who grew up as a kid in annapolis his dad steve a coach with the academy and went to uh, wesleyan middletown connecticut he's used to a little rain there was some ball control and ball issues last week against Pittsburgh when it got wet and it got cold. We got a little bit of both. Raining harder than ever now. Third and ten for Castle and the Patriots. Got to hurry again. And just does get the snap. And a safety blitz and he gets away from that but not the second wave. He's down on the sack by Baraka Atkins. The second year end from Miami of Florida. Nice job by Brian Russell coming from that safety position. Flushing him up to the defensive line. That'll be a punt situation for New England at the two minute warning. Here's Chris Hansen the left footed kicker with uh, Justin Forsett spent three games this year returning kicks for Indianapolis started with Seattle now he's back with them former Cal Bear wobbler toward the sidelines bad kick that's going to give be Seattle a good field position around the 30 yard line has got to be around the 30 better than that 31. Well Hanson unhappy with himself he was trying to kick one of those wobblers down inside the 10 and uh, nailed it to the sidelines just suddenly the rain decreases in intensity just a light drizzle now as Seneca Wallace and Seattle start from the 31 Wallace off play action screens it to Carlson the tight end and Carlson back to the line of scrimmage and that's all Richard Seymour right there to make the play 
You know, when this season started, and, and for many reasons, and it's a long story about the who, what, and where, and whatnot, but Mike Holmgren basically got around to saying, this is going to be it. This is my last year. And, man, what a fabulous job this guy's done in Seattle. He spent all that time in Green Bay, won a, a Super Bowl in Green Bay with Ron Wolf, and came here, was able to run his own show, made some great moves, made some mistakes, learned by those mistakes as a coach. I think the best compliment you can give a guy like Mike Holmgren is I think he's one of the best teachers I was ever around. And uh, he said he'll take a year off after this year, but wouldn't uh, be opposed to a general manager's role. To the 34 goes Morris. Fans wanted Wallace to be throwing here with a minute left in the half. Seahawks have three timeouts. Use one here. Well, he has a Super Bowl victory with Green Bay when he beat uh, Bill Parcells, New England Patriots in Super Bowl 31. Brett Favre threw for 246 and two touchdowns. Super Bowl MVP Desmond Howard. Remember that 99-yard kickoff return for a score as he won uh, the MVP in that Super Bowl championship. And then three years ago, took Seattle to the Super Bowl championship game against the Pittsburgh Steelers and there are a lot of folks up here still that have indigestion over a couple of calls in that game that really turned it around as Bill Cowher's Steelers prevailed. Yeah Dick if you should decide and you're an owner out there and you've got a football team and maybe he gets tired of riding his motorcycle and going to the beach I would find Mike Holmgren and ask him if he wants to run my organization. That timeout was by the Patriots. They've used two now and uh, Seneca Wallace and Seattle have all three. The pass is complete, but short of the first down to Carlson, the tight end. They're calling it inbounds. And pushed out. Lewis Sanders uh, made the play. Bill Belichick's team has 50 seconds and no timeouts. It was a very nice job of closing on the receiver as the ball's thrown out. So you have the ball, forward motion is stopped right there. He's knocked. And that's going to be a play that's going to be called by the officials. They're going to keep winding that clock. So that worked in the favor of Seattle, forced uh, the Patriots to spend their final time out. All right. The forward motion of the ball, Dean Pieces, defensive back Sanders did a very nice job of driving through the receiver and stopping that forward motion and keeping that, keeping that clock moving. But as a result, they had to take their final time out. Walker is back. Ryan was under a lot of pressure on his last punt. Gets this one away cleanly. A low bouncer that Walker fields at the 25. And he's hit immediately. Downfield on the coverage. Courtney Taylor, wide receiver. Down to the last quarter of this 2008 season. Who will the survivors be in the NFL go to the playoffs? 40 yards to a field goal range. Good protection. Dump off underneath the Falk, and he's to the 36-yard line. And the hurry up here for the Patriots. Clock ticking down to 30 seconds. Jordan Babineau and Kelly Jennings, that last tackle. Don't snooze on Randy Moss. You better help over the top on Marcus Trufant. That's Moss to the near side, and the slot is Walker. The throw is the other way, and it's incomplete. Gaffney was not in bounds when the ball arrived. 17 seconds left. Now you got to think, realistically, you have to get the ball to at least the 35-yard line in these conditions. That's going to be a 53-yard field goal. Guskowski, we, we've seen him enough times have the leg to kick a significant field goal, but it is raining. It's a little damp. It's kind of dreary. The ball will not carry as far as normal. On third and one, Castle to the sidelines. And then they uh, down, drop the ball as if he didn't want the uh, catch because then uh, it would stop the clock. Jabbar Gaffney realized that it wasn't much of a game there. And now they'll it's not over. be able to get a play over before the end of the half. 
So the Seattle Seahawks, their fans haven't had a lot of opportunity to cheer this year, winning only one of six at home, but they certainly provided some entertainment in the first 30 minutes today. 14-10, they leave the field with the lead, and we'll be back with a Sprint Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. Distinguished himself in that opening half as uh, he was 10 for 14. Two touchdowns. And his numbers on the season in this fifth start, you know, seven touchdown runs into the wall of special teamers led by Matthew Slater. They'll start from the 20. Individually, Wallace against Castle. And both men uh, threw well in that first half, each with a touchdown, one for Castle, two for Wallace. Morris, 25 yards, the leading rusher, and Morris for Seattle. And Wes Welker, boy, just always seems to be open, doesn't he? And Carlson matching Welker and actually had one more catch, six. Wallace into the flat, complete to Bobby Ingram, and Ingram ducks out of bounds at the 28-yard line, an eight-yard pickup. Yeah, New England comes right out and gives him a blitz, and that produces a, a, a quick reception. And you see what happens there in the first half possessions of the Seattle Seahawks. They got off to a blazing start setting the standard they haven't set this season. Well, they've had trouble uh, having to defend because they're on the field eight minutes and 20 seconds on the average per game more than the offense. Short yardage for Maurice Morris. He's going to be a little short of the first down. Brings up third and less than a yard as Mike Wright, Gerard Mayo, and Brable in on the tackle. Injuries for Seattle coming in. Hasselbeck is designated as the third quarterback. It would only be an emergency if he plays. Walt Jones, the eight-time Pro Bowl tackle. He's not in uniform. Leroy Hill, the leading tackler, also inactive today. Straight ahead goes Duckett, and the big man pounds out to the 35 in the first down. Junior Seau there to make the stop. Hello, sunshine. You want to talk about a nice hit by T.J. Duckett. Keeping those feet churning. Gerard Mayo comes up. Merriweather plants a shoulder in him, and all he does is pause him. Doesn't even stop him, and he just drives right through for the extra yards. That was some beautiful power running. A little zoo from Kalamazoo. First down at the 35. Morris now the tailback. Spins away from the invader for the Patriots, Mike Vrabel, and out to the line of scrimmage. All right, it's, a, it's a nice job right now by the New England Patriots defense starting out here of mixing and matching because you do have some different bodies in there. Remember, you know, Teddy Bruschi went out with the bruised knee. Will Fork went out with the shoulder earlier. So that means you're going to have to get Vrabel on the outside. You've got Guyton on the other side. You've got Colvin playing now. You've got Sale playing now. And Colvin and Sale just became Patriots again this week. Wallace dumps it out into the flat to Morris, complete. Stop and start, and out to the 44, just short of the first down. Good effort by Mo Morris. Jonathan Wilhite, Jr. Seau, collaborate on the tackle. And adding to the injury, remember Ty Warren, the starting defense man, he didn't suit up today. And you saw that last play by Junior, and this is what you add. And we mean the grumpy old men part. <laughs> In the nicest of ways, <laughs> but... You know, there's a reason they're able to go back. You know, I, I'm sure people may have thought about pursuing Roosevelt Colvin, pursuing Junior Seau. This is the only team they play for. Wallace throws underneath, and it's complete to Carlson, and a first down at the 49. Junior Seau, the tackler. Man, is that a beautiful job by Weaver, the fullback, taking on Mike, Mike Vrabel and putting him right on his back. Watch the fullback come out here and take on the blitz coming from the outside. Just flips him over onto his name on the back of his jersey. And that buys Seneca Wallace just enough time to flip that thing out and get it to the young tight end. And a nice catch by Carlson. They talk about his hands. Hand it off now to Weaver. Weaver into the clear at the 40, but a flag is down. All the way to the 24 of the Patriots. Will it count? Now it's going to be holding against the offense. Holding, number 66, offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Mansfield Rotto, young man from Georgia Tech, getting his uh, NFL start today and baptism. 
Mike Wall injured, put on the IRR. He's right there, and watch them stretch this defense to the defense's left. Rado comes down onto the nose tackle right and puts the Heimlich on him and gets flagged for it. <laughs> Coughing up the penalty there. Huh? <laughs> he was afraid he was going to choke on his mouthpiece. He was just helping him out. See big Walter Jones there, future Hall of Famer, just a one of the great players, greatest players to ever put on this uniform. Bad knee and Jones embarrassed uh, in the game at Thanksgiving Day against Dallas trying to play on one leg. Wallace underneath throws to Ingram. Ingram hit immediately as he gets to the 45 46 yard line. Uh, again, it was Merriweather with Hobbs to make the tackle. And you see this possession being the way it is. And yeah, they've had the, the holding penalty, which took back that great run by Weaver, but a lot of confidence. Not only from Seneca Wallace and this offensive line and the receivers, but Mike Holmgren and his play calling have shown a world of confidence in Seneca and the offensive football team. Corin Robinson and Carlson to the right. Deion Branch on the left side. Second and long. Wallace into the flat, complete to Morris. Morris gets out to the 46 of New England. A good game. Jonathan Wilhite, who started today for Delph O'Neill, made the play defensively. That'll bring up third down and three. Hey, if there's anything that's been an Achilles heel besides these three really bad losses for New England, it's been anything and long. First and long for Bill Belichick's defense, second and long, third and long. They have given up an inordinate amount of big plays when an offense has a long way to go. And that's a huge, it's a very bad sign of a defense that's just not rallying properly to the ball. Triple right, Seneca has hit the last seven passes, has to throw that one incomplete. To Morris, a little center screen, because so, Mike Wright was just into the face of Wallace almost before he could uh, look up for a receiver. Uh, he was over the center, Valos, youngster out of Wake Forest, and, and he doesn't really, he kind of whiffs on him. He, gives the center an arm over and the center gave him an arm over and never the twain met and there was absolutely no slowing down by right sounds like a call on a square dance arm over arm a dozy do huh? it's pretty close Brian it's a flip flop down to the right sidelines out of bounds away from Walker at about the 15 yard line it was a flip flop kind of like a, a house slipper <laughs> When you get home, swing your <laughs> own. New England Patriots making the trip west for the second time. They'll stay in San Jose all next week and then play the Raiders next Sunday. They start from the 18-yard line. Trailing Seattle by four. First possession, second half. Castle stays in that shotgun. Gives it off to Sammy Morris. And Morris drives to the 22-yard line. A pickup of four. Here's the report card on the first half for New England. You know, Dick, you, you've watched boxing over the years. And this is almost like a performance by the Patriot team. Is After the big fight, they've got a fight against a guy that... Not a tomato can, but somebody they really should beat. And when they come out for the first half of the fight, they're still affected by the last fight. The Patriots better shake the Steelers out of their system. Pressure on from outside. The throw complete to Walker and a good defensive tackle by Kelly Jennings. Wouldn't let Walker spin away at the 25 where it'll be third and a long three. Yeah, because Bill Cower mentioned at halftime that, that he thought also that this team was affected by that pounding they took from Pittsburgh. Well, New England is looking at a Jet team that's struggling with San Francisco. The Niners are giving the Jets all they can handle. They've got a heck of an opportunity to make up some ground here in the division, but right now they're wasting it. 49ers lead the Jets 14-7 in the third. On third and three, Castle's got time to look for Welker. Incomplete out of the backfield. It was Falk. Welker over the middle, Falk to the outside. The ball just a little too tall for the 5'8 running back. Combination of a bit too tall and a little bit too much speed. You know, if that ball's thrown with a little less velocity, maybe Falk can get it. But give this Seahawk defense a little credit. They put the pressure on Matt Castle that enabled that to be an inaccurate throw. 
Three and out. So Chris Hansen, the southpaw kicker, to send it to Justin Forsett. He stands at the 30. Beautiful high kick. Forsett late but gets the fair catch at the 29-yard line. Seattle will have it there when we return to the Northwest. Replacing the old kingdom, the Quest Field opened in 2002. 50% of the concrete in the building is from the old kingdom. Matt Hasselbeck, who came with Mike Holmgren from Green Bay, is Holmgren built a very successful franchise here. Wallace rolling, throwing, and caught. No, Corn Robinson couldn't haul it in. is inside to Maurice Morris has a good hole but a close when Gerard Mayo used his youthful speed to get to the ball carrier after a gain of seven. Uh, I wonder if that guy cleared it with Ozzy Osbourne they could go to the Seahawks game as the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> but he's rooting for a football team Dick that I say it takes confidence to dress like that. This is a confident team. This is a two and ten team that right now is smacking a seven and five team that, that was in the Super Bowl last year right between the eyes and coming away with it. Leading by four midpoint of the third quarter. And uh, Seneca Wallace ran out of time. First time out spent as Carl Sheffers announces that to the Seahawks crowd. in the holiday mood here in Seattle. Four-point lead for the Seahawks. A big third and four for Seattle from their 36. And Wallace on the roll, looking and throwing over the middle incomplete. Corin Robinson was the closest target. Not close. So they'll have to give up the ball, Seattle. Well, regardless, that was a good timeout that Seneca Wallace took. And it was a nice job by him of buying that extra time, regardless of the fact that it received, none of the receivers looked like he was going to try to throw it to him. But on the play before when they called that timeout, they had so many defenders, they were going to blitz and sack him for a significant loss. Saw so that list of injuries for the Patriots. Add James Sanders, rib injury, he's questionable. The safety inside the 15, gets away from the first man, and then the second wave at the 18 knocks him out of bounds. Timeout in Seattle. Seahawks jumped out to a 14-3 lead. Now protecting a four-point advantage. Randy Moss, only two catches, 23 yards. He's gone over 13,000 yards in his career. That's 11th best all time. He's out to the right side. From the 19, handoff inside to Morris, and Morris has a good hole. And finally stuffed at the 25-yard line after a pickup of six to Tupu, led the charge. Well, not hard to figure out with these Patriots lately, Dick, that, you know, every week you say, well, how many catches does Randy Moss have? Well, look at the touchdown production when they win and the touchdown and catches and everything. When they lose, you take away Randy Moss, you take away the big play from this offense. Morris shifts back into the backfield on second down and four. Castle pointing out to Tupu. And the throw to the sideline, Welker, first down at the 33-yard line. Another catch for the mighty might. Wes Welker, who has gained the admiration of all of his teammates. They just marveled at those hits that you saw earlier in the first half that we mm -hmm. replayed against Miami and against Pittsburgh. And for him to bounce up and come right back, I liked what he said. Hey, he just made a good football play. He wasn't going to complain about the hit, whether it was uh, over the top or not. Just move on. Fake to Morris. Castle with a lot of time throwing it deep for Moss, but incomplete. Actually, Welker underneath was the man that Castle tried to hit. He was covered by T Tutupu. Yeah, he was just throwing that away, Dick. 
because Randy Moss had completely cleared out. And you look up and suddenly Wes Walker is now underneath being double teamed. It, just looking what the defense has done the last two plays, you have got to start getting the ball to Jabbar Gaffney, and you've got to find a way to get your ball to your tight end position to Benjamin Watson. Otherwise, they're going to shut down this passing game. Moss give him a breather on second and ten. Fall with Castle in the backfield. He's going long down the right side. A push off by Jabbar Gaffney. Ball well out of bounds. Mike Holmgren calling for offensive interference. Marcus Trufant was the yeah. defender. Nice job by Rocky Bernard, though, getting into Matt Castle's rib cage and not allowing him to step into that throw. He has to throw the ball falling away. That's why it's high and it's outside. Mm. Boy, I mean, Bernard really bull rushed his man to fight his way into the backfield, didn't he? I don't know what's for dinner, but right now ribs are for lunch. Been a rough day for the Patriots. Vrabel returned, but three other starters have not. Third and ten. The throw to Wilker is complete at the 50, and what a throw by Castle as he was being hit. It didn't have a lot on him. Julian uh, Peterson was right in the face of Castle, and somehow he was able to get enough on the ball and find Welker. Wouldn't you like to know what's going through Wes Welker's mind right now? I mean, you talked about the throw, but look at that thing hang, hang up in the air. It's like, come down, come down, come down. I know there's a safety here getting ready to smack me. The eighth catch of the game for Wes Welker. Now with 92 on the season. He had 112 last year. Handed off inside Lamont Jordan, and he carries tacklers for an extra yard or two, a gain of three. Peterson on his back. And don't ever let anybody tell you that size will preclude you from playing in this game. But if you do play and you're not the biggest guy, you better be tough. Mm. You better be able to take those kind of hits. He didn't return against Pittsburgh, but he was back in practice on Tuesday. And here he is delivering with eight catches today. Pressure on Castle gets away and finally tackled by Daryl Tapp, who chased him down, the third year defensive end from Virginia Tech. Yeah, they wanted to throw a little screen over here. I think they were trying to throw it back to Welker because they they brought Kasher and they brought Neal out in a little screen to the right. And as soon as Matt Castle flipped around and went to look to throw it, nice job by the entire defensive left side sniffing out that screen and making Castle try to scramble because he couldn't throw that screen out. Third down and three, not five, third and three. And the throw complete to you-know-who, little Wes Walker. Nobody wanted him when he came out of high school in Oklahoma City. The only scholarship was the last one. That was Texas Tech, and because a player late decided to go elsewhere, no one liked him enough to draft him into the NFL, a free agent picked by San Diego in 2004. Eventually, it was Miami that got him when he was released by the Chargers and then the trade to New England, and now he's caught well over 200 passes in three years with the Patriots. Probably the best thing that happened to him in San Diego was being with Tim Dwight, a fellow smarter, smaller guy that taught him a lot. They wanted to go the screen to Welker, but he was covered, so Castle throws underneath incomplete. Was he, was he past the line yeah. of scrimmage? Moss was the intended receiver. I mean, that was close. Remember, his entire body has to be past the line of scrimmage. There was no flag there, but, man, that looked close. That extra sense that the quarterbacks have of where that line of scrimmage is. Line of scrimmage is the 32. Now watch his body. Boy, that so, is... So remember, the entire thing has to... His entire body, the ball, the feet, everything. Any piece of that is behind the line of scrimmage. It's a legal pass. Second and ten. Here comes a safety blitz. The throw over the side is complete. And it's uh, Sam Aiken who has his first catch today. And he just couldn't get away from the piggyback tackle of Kelly Jennings. See, a nice, patient, methodical 
at times physical drive like this for New England is just what the doctor ordered. You've got to reestablish kind of the pecking order. If you want this team from Seattle to remember they're not supposed to win this game, you've got to give them the reason to, because right now these fans and this football team think they're going to win. Third down three. Much closer to three than four. Castle has it batted back incomplete. Julian Peterson up there to swat it away from the intended receiver. Fourth and four, out come Gostowski. And just nice job of just getting up the hands and Peterson swatting that thing away like you said. It wasn't like it was over his head. He had to reach out to get into the passing lane to knock that one down. Gostowski good from 50 going in the other direction. This one will be 42. He's missed only three all year of 31 attempts. And that one is true as it can be. The Patriots, a long drive ends in three. They trail by one in Seattle. At Quest Field in downtown Seattle, the Patriots favored, trail by one with 2.40 left in the third. Kostowski with 50 and 42 yard field goals now punches this one end over end to Josh Wilson at the two. Fumbles the ball. Kostowski. He had a chance, the scramble, and who's got it now? Seattle. Seattle. Will Herring saving the day for the Seahawks. We talked earlier about ball maintenance. Taking care of the ball being so key for New England. Who makes the first mistake when it comes to ball maintenance? But the Seattle Seahawks. Gostowski had it, but it was a very tough sliding chance by the kicker. He was closest to it initially. And that, that wasn't really knocked out. I think Josh Wilson, actually his knee comes up and hits the ball and knocks it out. And Gostowski had a great chance to curl up. Forsett makes a defensive play by knocking him off the ball and then Herring scoops it in for Seattle to save a disaster. The Seahawks take it at the 38. Does, does Josh Wilson get credited with a, a fumble caused? He does it himself. <laughs> Maurice Morris takes a handoff. Flag down. Thrown by the referee. That's usually not good for the offense. Uh, it's against uh, Locklear, I think, working on Seymour. Holding, number 75, offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat, first down. So it was an offensive holding penalty denying a long run by the fullback Leonard Weaver that put the Seahawks in the hole, their first possession of this second half. Hey, he's working against Richard Seymour, and Seymour is just going to, here's Lockler, and here's Seymour just taking a quick down angle, and he's almost got a half tackle him. He takes the wrong step, and he grabs the all-pro defensive end, Richard Seymour. This has been an outrageously bad quarter for Seattle. They've been outscored 91 to 22 on the season. Wallace buying time, throws to the sidelines. Clever move by Dion Branch and the ex-Patriot. Look at this, he's in the open now. Can anyone catch him? Has got blockers. Still on his feet at the 30. Oh my, all the way to the nine yard line. Challenge. 63 yards if Dion Branch. He ran 63, but it was closer to 150 that on was, the pedometer. That was Junior Seau that first missed. Deion Branch and Bill Belichick has thrown the challenge flag out. He thinks that Branch left the playing field. Branch, who told us that finally this year, this week he felt 100%. He's been injured all season long, missed the first three games. Certainly ran that one like a healthy receiver, didn't he? I'd say at the end of the play, the, the guy is challenging the ruling on the field that the pass is incomplete. Uh, class is complete. We'll review the play. And that's because they think that Deion Branch 
stepped out on the sideline when he came back to his quarterback. Seneca Wallace, you know the scramble drill? Well, your receivers are supposed to come back to you. Deion Branch does a nice job right here in the corner. There he is. Does he step out of bounds? He's not there. He's not there. Uh, don't know if Fish right there right he's at out. It. The official's official right there. His whistle's in his mouth, but he doesn't blow it. He doesn't wave his arm. So in his mind, he didn't see him out of bounds. He was staring right at it, Dick. From that low angle, very difficult to tell. Yeah, no doubt it's that foot, that left foot. But again, here's the official right behind Dion Branch. And, and wonderful job. He made Junior Seau miss. And Junior Seau has been playing football in 2008. All of, well, you talked about the first day he put on cleats, which yesterday after the Super Bowl, he made a miss. And then he cuts across the field, picks up a lot of great blocks. And the best block, without any doubt, was the one he got from Corin Robinson. But then again, Ray Riar right there. But I have to go back to here's the official. He is standing right there. And look at that. He is looking straight down at that foot. So remember, can't get a better angle than that. And he still he gets the whistle in his mouth there, but doesn't blow it. And here either, if the challenge is accepted and the play overruled it's an incomplete pass mm -hmm. if it stands it's a 63 yard gain this is a big call but our, our referee Carl Sheffers has to see when he goes under the hood here something so conclusive right here now here's a little bit blown up but I'll tell you again here's our official and he's looking right down at that foot like a first base umpire checking the Bang, bang, play. Who's got a better angle than him? And I, there's nothing overwhelmingly conclusive to overturn this, I don't think, given the fact that a member of the crew is standing right there. He's the one. We can't take that reverse shot that Bill Belichick standing on the sideline. He thought he might have seen him step out of bounds, but, I mean, our, the official is right there. Yeah, if I had been Belichick from his angle, the same sideline, I'd have tossed the red flag. No, it was a great job. I mean, he had that thing out of his sock almost immediately when, at, right after Junior Seau missed that tackle. So with uh, a minute, 21 seconds left in the third, a very critical decision is about to be announced. Was he out of bounds, or does this 63-yard catch and run count? Yeah, but who's got the best angle here? You and me at home? on this being out of bounds, or our official is right there. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Seattle. New England will be charged with their first time out. It was a very nice usage of replay by Bill Belichick, and I think it was a perfect job by the officials on hand making the decision with what they had at their disposal. The we video should. wasn't conclusive, and there, you had an official right there. And wouldn't you know, the focal point of all of that was the former Patriot, the former MVP of a Super Bowl, Deion Branch, 63 yards. The ball spotted now at the nine-yard line, first and goal, as Seattle, with a one-point lead, breaks huddle. I'd find Carlson or Branch if I throw it. Instead, it's to the fullback Weaver, and Weaver inside the five and down to the three-yard line. They're using him more and more. He's 242 pounds, played his college ball for the Eagles at Carson Newman. He's uh, gained 70 yards rushing and 14 on pass catches, but every time he's gotten the ball of late in these recent weeks, he makes good things happen. How about Deion Branch? 13 catches coming into today. Had been, had been very much a disappointment since he's been traded. Second and goal. Wallace looking for his third touchdown throw. Goes for Branch. Oh, my! Is that a great catch? Uh, Ellis Hobbs did almost everything he could physically do. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, you have seen two remarkable, highly professional circus plays by number 83, Dion Branch. The long catch and run, and look at this, like an outfielder. Tipping it to himself. The only thing Hobbs could have done differently is grab the arms and strip the ball out. But really, who'd have thought he could have caught it? He only basically... <laughs> 
slowed it down and caught back up to it. Extra point by Mare. Well, it's not just a branch. It's the whole big tree here in the third quarter. Dion, number 83, produces seven points for the Seahawks, and they take the lead 21 to 13. Well, that was a remarkable catch, but I almost think the individual effort and the entire offense blocking for him on that big run and catch that preceded Weaver's run and then that throw by Seneca Wallace was one of the better plays. You will definitely see that repeatedly over the next three or four days in highlights. You'll see that big run and catch, and you'll see this. Mm. What was the stat you had last night, Dick, talking to Deion Branch? He Branch's? has 21 catches in two Super Bowls. Right. All season this year he has 13 catches. Wow. Until today, three and two of them for touchdowns, his first of the year. Well, talking about the Super Bowl, We'll uh, show you evidence of uh, how he saved his best for the biggest game while a New England Patriot. And that one play, not the touchdown, beautiful catch by Deion Branch, but that run and catch by him illustrated the gap, really, that's been created with New England's defense. It's not a very fast defense, and if you can get them out of position and use your speed, you can get yards on New England now. And Branch was able to because of a couple of key blocks and pure athleticism, take advantage of the New England defense. And how about Seneca Wallace in five starts? He has eight touchdowns, one interception. Matt Hasselbeck, not this time. Dragged down at the 23-yard line by Jordan Babineau. Well, let's go back to Branch in the Super Bowl. As a Patriot, Super Bowl 38 against Carolina. Ten catches, 143 yards, a touchdown. Patriots win 32-29. Super Bowl 39 against Philadelphia. Super Bowl record, 11 receptions at the time, 133 yards. Named the Super Bowl MVP. Patriots win at 24-21. Spectacular. Deion Branch here in the third quarter. He was just waiting for New England to come to town to show out after that trade. Oh, he was motivated, wasn't he? <laughs> yes, we talked to Castle and the Patriots try to strike back. Throw to the sidelines. Almost a one-handed catch by Randy Moss, who's made his share of those. Marcus Trufant with the coverage. And, and Dick, the play I, was, I talked about a couple times was that run and catch by Deion Branch. Seneca Wallace buys the time. And then look out. Getting some nice blocking. First from Spencer. Oh. But watch down the field. The, the support he gets from his entire team, especially Corin Robinson, buys him 20 yards at the end of that run. Lewis Sanders finally denying the touchdown, only to prolong the time that Branch would get the six points. This crowd really fired up now. Underneath, incomplete to Moss. Good defensive play again by Trufant. Marcus Trufant, who made the Pro Bowl a year ago, number one pick formerly at Washington State. Well, Matt Castle puts it in a perfect position. And it bounces right off Randy Moss's hands. And last week he had a couple of big drops. And that's a big momentum drop there. Now you set up third and ten. This means you can take a chance and bring a little man on the outside and blitz Matt Castle. Kevin Falk, one of his favorite targets on third down. Welker in motion. Safety blitz. The throw is caught by Gaffney and only his momentum loss saved Seattle there because he would have been gone for a touchdown. The pressure came from Brian Russell, the safety on Castle. He stood the test, made this throw. And it's exactly what you need to have happen if you're in New England. You've gone to Moss, it hasn't worked out. You've repeated, repeatedly gone to Wes Welker and he's worked out. You need to spread this ball around or they'll have no respect for the rest of your receiving crew. There's a... Scoring line with Seattle leading and for New England they've lost five times this year all five times they were trailing after the third quarter. Matt Castle got his right hand bangs pretty good at the end of that play Dick. He was looking at it during that timeout hands off inside and it's big Lamont Jordan powering his way for four into the 46 yard line of Seattle Lawrence Jackson number one draft pick from Southern California the tackle and remember his backup is Kevin O'Connell the rookie draft pick out of San Diego State and 
It was Baraka Atkins, the defensive end, that came in and swatted a hand at Castle as they were throwing, and their hands met. There's O'Connell. Matt Gutierrez was the third string quarterback. Castle under pressure throws it away. Gaffney was the closest receiver. Talking about Jabbar Gaffney, his dad, of course, Derek played at Florida in eight years with the Jets. Gaffney, and this surprised me, I looked at his career total. He's made three catches today, and in his career, he has 250 catches. And you just don't think of him as being that productive. But every year, he's around that 25, 30, 35 catches. Yeah, every year, it seemed like they were going to get rid of him. And every year, he finds a way to stay here, and he finds a way to contribute. Big third and seven for New England. In the den of Questfield, Seattle. Time for Castle, and he's going to go long for Moss. And Moss has it and steps out of bounds inside the 20-yard line at the 18. Perfect throw and catch. Over Josh Wilson, the corner for Seattle. Well, never mind about the Matt Castle hand thing. I guess it was incidental. He was flexing it, but he, get, he drops this in and spins it perfectly to Randy Moss, who catches it and does a little one-two with his feet after he catches it to make it a catch. One-two, inbounds, beautiful throw, wonderful catch. Wilson was helpless. Pair of 28-yard receptions, first to Gaffney and then to Moss. To set up New England inside the 15. And timeout will be spent here by Matt Castle. Just underway, fourth quarter. The Patriots looking to tie. If they score, Castle scrambles, hit from behind, and dropped at the 12-yard line by Darrell Tapp. I think he got to the line of scrimmage, so there's no sack. There is also no shoe on that right foot. Look at the right hand of Darrell Tapp. Tell me he didn't watch James Harrison from last week in Pittsburgh stripping that ball out. Watch the tomahawk chop on the ball. Castle gets it in the left hand away from Tapp's swing with the arm, and as he goes to the ground, that shoe goes flying over his shoulder. No sack. Officially, he gained a yard. Second and nine. Still having trouble getting that shoe on. Down six. to six. Fall. And he's hit hard at the ten. Noses it to the nine. Brian Russell, veteran from San Diego State, and Baraka Atkins collaborate on the stop. Third down. Ball spotted just inside the 10. Now here's a situation in 2007 when Tom Brady was running this offense. Teams lived in mortal fear of this team as to where they're going to go with the ball. Why not go top of the screen to Moss on a fade? Moss to the right, three receivers to the left, Falk in the backfield. Man coverage. Gaffney in motion. The throw on the fade to Moss. Too long. No flag. Trufant. Boy, he's going to rest well tonight. Trufant trying to cover Moss all afternoon. You saw Castle pleading for a flag. Well, Trufant was well off, but this is man coverage. You see Moss again as he yeah. has throughout his career. He uses his hands well. And so that was one of those uh, both you guys yeah. are using a little too much, so we won't throw the flag. That was thrown away, too. That was not put. It was, that was put where only an usher could get to it. Gostowski has kicked two today, 50-42. This is a short one, 27. But a moral victory for the Seahawks, who deny the touchdown and maintain the lead by five. How many times last year did you see Tom Brady throw it to that back shoulder? See the one in the back of Randy Moss's shoulder? Marcus Trufant's not even looking. He throws and, and uh, runs into trouble there. Had the wall, but uh, was uh, 
Just one defender for the Patriots. I believe it was Ray Ventrone who denied. Put some pressure on Wallace. Instead, he hands off to Morris. Nothing outside, nothing inside. He has to swallow a loss of a couple as Lee Keevan Smith playing for the injured Vince Wolfork at nose tackle makes the stop with Sayal supporting. Yeah, look at that front seven. I mean, look who's out there. You got Lakeven Smith. You've got Mike Wright sitting right next to him. There's no Brewski. He's out. No Wolfork. No Warren. He's out. No Ty Warren. He's out. The top of the screen there is. Roosevelt Colvin just got there this week, and Sale's playing linebacker. Sale didn't arrive till Thursday night. Wallace throws underneath, and it's complete to the tight end, John Carlson. And Carlson continues to rack up the numbers with the receptions. Mayo, the defender. That's eight catches for Carlson. Working on that heart of the defense, the center, the linebackers, and the safeties. Carlson does a nice job, gets Mayo out of position. Mayo can't spin back. He can't pivot quick enough. Good smart move by the rookie tight end. Third and three. Carlson now with uh, 46 catches on the year. Throws underneath again. Carlson has the first down and more to the 37-yard line. Lewis Sanders with a tackle. Well, third and shortish. You've got an H back and you have a tight end. And as soon as Carlson recognizes the blitz, Right off the line of scrimmage, he's looking back at Seneca Wallace, expecting the ball. You see the blitz come, and there comes the ball from Seneca Wallace. How about them apples, Dick? 24-14, Niners. The Jets have had trouble uh, with the AFC West. They lost at San Diego and lost at Oakland, and now it's the NFC West. The toss is to Morris, and he's trapped in the backfield and smothered at the 33-yard line. And speaking of the Jets and 49ers, let's get an official update with J.B. in New York. This is going to be a shocking day wow. for New York. The Giants losing at home, and the Jets expected to win at San Francisco. The draw play is to Leonard Weaver, and Weaver straight ahead to the 37-yard line. That'll bring up third down and about 10. Hey, but normally you'd say, hey, what a great circumstance for the New England Patriots. Look at what the Niners are doing to the Jets, and Mike Singletary's, Singletary's coaching himself into a permanent job there in he San sure Francisco. Is. But Bill Belichick's football team is still staring at New York's back any way you look at it. They get upset. This game keeps up like this. They're going to be in the same position. Miami's leading 16 to 3 and watch out for the much improved Dolphins. Look at this. Eight, nine men up on yeah. the line of scrimmage and that forced uh, Seneca Wallace to use second his charge, second timeout. timeout. the conclusion of this game. Third and ten for Wallace. Tries to break out of trouble. Can he run it for a first down? Now he throws to Branch. Was he inbounds? Yes. No. Yes, he was. Oh, one official ruled it no, and he's come in and overruled the call of the official closer to the line of scrimmage. That was awfully close. I thought those feet dragged really on the field perfectly. The pass was incomplete. Fourth down. There's Deion Branch again. Look at those feet. Now, does the ball move? Does he possess all the way through the catch? Yes, I sure think does. he did. But would have been a first down. No, they're both. That's, both. I t I'm sorry. His feet are in. I'm not sure if the side of his ankle, though, isn't sitting out of bounds. And Holmgren hasn't thrown the red flag. Now, Fans are yelling for him to do so because they've just replayed it up on no, the screen. Go. And He's Holmgren's smart. saying, go ahead and let Kick the ball. Remember the two timeouts because of the defensive confusion. Low returnable for Walker. And he's tackled at the 29-yard line. 
Herring downfield for the stop. Timeout in Seattle. Seattle leads by five with 8.47 to go in the fourth quarter. Comes the blitz. Castle steps up away from it, and then they get him at the 25. Baraka Atkins and Lofa Tutupu. Atkins' first taste of a sack all season. In the two A gaps, you've got Babineau and you have Tutupu. Babineau bails, Tutupu blitzes, and Baraka At Atkins is able to get that sack because everybody else takes up blockers. Atkins got a little fault, the running back, to try to block him. Couldn't slow him down enough and prevent that sack. Tutupo may get half of it, but nevertheless, that's the first uh, mark in the column for Atkins this year for a sack. Nice blitz call by John Marshall, their defensive coordinator. Second and 14. Who steps away from more pressure. Now races to the sideline and gets out of bounds across the 30 to the 34-yard line. That'll bring up third down and about seven. Well, the playoff uh, intensity is we're in December. Tennessee with a the win. They have clinched their division. They're in the playoffs with the Steelers in a battle with Dallas. The Jets were behind and Denver leading the West. Well, the first half of the prescription for New England, Dick, was pretty simple. Get the Jets to lose and then take advantage of it. Well, you may have the Jets losing, but you might just stay, keep pace with them by losing in another upset. Castle having trouble and is finally going to call timeout. He thought he apparently was shortchanged in the play clock. Third and final charge timeout, Seattle. A 30-second timeout. Seattle called the time, so no timeouts remaining for Mike Holmgren. five gets the first down and what a block by the left tackle Matt Light to come out and give Falk the avenue. A beautiful block not only by Light but also by Jabbar Gaffney who lines up in the slot. Light gets the first block, Gaffney gets the second block and you know Falk talked about early in his career he might have gone sideways a little bit too much. Now he goes north and south and that was all north and south. 11 yards on the play first down at the 45. Castle, plenty of time, and he finds the, uh, nope, incomplete. Ball not free from Wes Walker. Not many times you'll see that happen. Julian Peterson there to scoop up the ball in case. Anybody else on this Patriot football team want to make the hard catch? Do you always have to throw it mm -hmm. in the tightest areas where there'll be the most contact to your smallest receiver? Josh Wilson jarring the ball free. Deafening noise here in Seattle. Knocked away from the defender and Welker with a catch to the 49. Brian Russell with a tackle. And Lawrence Jackson, uh, how'd that ball get through him as he was in on quarterback Castle? Right, and it's almost the exact same play you saw on the other side. Welker comes in motion. Jabbar Gaffney sitting there. He's gonna he's gonna do the kick out. Nick Casher, the tackle, doesn't get the block on the safety, and that's why the safety's able to make the tackle. Ten catches for Walker, 94 on the season with three games to go. Another third down. Castle fires to Gaffney, and it's good for the first down. They mark it possession at the 44. They needed four, they got five. Tatupu and Peterson, the two backers, sandwiched on the tackle, but not until 
The Patriots have another first down as the clock ticks down to six minutes to go. Jabbar Gaffney, the inside player on the bunch. Everyone else goes up the field. Jabbar Gaffney goes right to the down marker. Patriots are putting this game dick in Matt Castle's hands. They've shown a lot of faith the last month or so. This man at quarterback who for nine years didn't play any serious football. Nine years between starts through college and his years in the NFL. Throws this incomplete to Gaffney. A little too high with Jennings on the coverage. He has had under all scrutiny an outstanding season castle when he takes over for Brady unexpected in that first game and everyone raves about he's improved every week his work work ethic his management in the huddle mm -hmm. he's going to be a very happy man next year whether he stays with New England or goes elsewhere and I think a lot of the credit not only goes to him as an individual also Josh McDaniels was his quarterback coach now is his offensive coordinator done a wonderful job with, with the his, young quarterback. With his yards today, Castle is over 3,000 for the year. He skips this one. One of the poor passes as Walker could not get low enough to drag that out of the field turf. Yeah, it's, that one's on Matt Castle. He just held on to that ball a little bit too long and drilled it into the ground trying to take a little bit of something off it. Bill Belichick's team has made good on two third downs. Just a little longer, third and ten. Still 15 yards from a reasonable field goal, 10 to first. Here comes the blitz. The throw, Welker, first down and out of bounds near the 30. Josh Wilson on the coverage. Great call, and under pressure, Castle throws a dart. Daryl Tapp was in his face. Well, I refer to this as there was an old movie called Billy Jack, and it's the obvious, where in that movie the... The star said, I'm going to put my right foot on the right side of your face, and there's nothing you can do about it. Matt Castle, despite Tapp's pressure, says, I'm going to throw it to Wes Walker, and there's nothing you can do about it. Ticking down to the five-minute mark. Another third down converted. Three on this drive. There's the pass to Walker. He gets the block again. He's still on his feet. Down the sidelines and out of bounds at the seven. Twelve catches for the slot machine, Wes Walker. And again, it was Matt Light and Jabbar Gaffney getting the combination block. Again in motion, kick out by Gaffney, peel back by Light, beautiful job by Welker avoiding Russell, then dancing the sideline down to the five. 4.55 left in the fourth quarter, first and goal. The Patriots six yards away from the lead. They have trailed throughout. Has to pull it in, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Brandon Mebane, the defensive tackle, brings him down at the six. Yeah, you know, nice design by the Patriots with better execution by Seattle. They had Randy Moss and Wes Welker on the left side, brought Welker in short motion. They were trying to run a little pick combination play with the left side with Moss and Welker there from the CC in the huddle. Couldn't do it, and that's why Matt Castle had to step up. Loss of a yard, so that is a sack to Mebane, his fifth of the year. Second and goal. Falk fights his way and gets a push from his own blocker down inside the one. Tatupu made the hit. All right, he's down to about the half yard line. A little bit on blocking, but Dick, this is an awful lot of want to by Kevin Falk. He yeah, just makes people miss and then just plays ping, just pinball, bouncing off folks. He was hit at the five and made four more yards. They spotted on the one, third and goal. Thirteenth play of this long drive to take the lead. The give is to Sammy Morris. No. He didn't make it. They used a quick snap, hoping that the Seahawks wouldn't be set defensively. Coming up on under three minutes to go. I think you go for it here. You have, you have one timeout left. Seahawks have none. You go for it here. And 
And so it is. Vrabel is in a tight end. But it's the dive by Sammy Morris for the touchdown. For the first time in Seattle today, the Patriots have the lead. And they're going to go, go for, for two. two. Absolutely. Beautiful job on the left side. Heath Evans opens up the hole. Logan Mankins almost kind of pulls his guy out of the hole. And that was a touchdown, but that was one of those touchdowns where the ball just did crease the goal line barely. Two-point conversion. The thinking, obviously, here, if successful, it's a three-point lead. And a field goal can only tie if they are denied. Seattle, with 2.44 to go, could uh, win it on a field goal. Bunch formation. That's Moss in motion. Single covered. Looking for Welker. They get him. The two-point conversion to the mighty Mike Wilker. What a player he is. You saw the hits he's absorbed to bounce back and play and come up with a 13 catch game. Wow, what a nice job. Gaffney comes underneath. Wilker goes behind him. And how big now with about 2.44 to go, the only way that clock's going to stop for Seattle is going to be because of the two-minute warning. How big are those two timeouts that Seneca Wallace had to take because of the defensive look, the overlook or the overbooked man look that they were giving him? They had at times nine guys at the line of scrimmage giving him the blitz, and he had to waste two timeouts. 2.44 to go, so the two-minute timeout is the only friend for Holmgren. And Bill Belichick's club battling back down 14 to 3 early. And Seahawks playing an outstanding game with their young quarterback, reserve Seneca Wallace, driving them to two quick scores on two possessions of the first half. But finally, it's a three point New England lead as Castle on that drive converting three third downs to keep it alive and a fourth down for the touchdown and he's still just the co-star if you're giving out oscars he's the best supporting actor because the best actor on this team right now is wes welker by a mile kostowski to josh wilson comes up to field at the eight down the sidelines and bumped out of bounds at around the 35 yard line see where they mark it uh, perhaps a little better than that 37. Seneca Wallace, no timeouts to use, but there is 2.40 to go. Well, don't forget not only his, his arm and his savvy, don't forget those legs. You get too conservative as a defense. You start dropping too deep. He can really burn you with those legs and add some rushing yards. Welker, well-deserved breather. Patriots defensively now without their big nose tackle Vince Wilfork. Ty Warren didn't even suit. Wilfork was injured in the first half. Teddy Bruschi injured in the first half. He's not in there. And the veterans that were signed only this week, Junior Seau and Roosevelt Colvin, seen a lot of duty at backer throughout the day. Wallace. Going to run it. Does he ever all the way to the 43-yard line? Dick, you mentioned, you mentioned after the two-point conversion, the two-pointer meant that the field goal ties you. Don't forget, if you score a touchdown, that's going to put you up by four. And it's going to force New England to score another touchdown. 23-yard scramble by Wallace, trying to get a playoff before the two-minute warning. He does. He doesn't get much either. Morris stacked up at the line of scrimmage. And that takes us to the 159 mark here in Seattle, where the Patriots lead by three. Courtney Taylor way out to the left. Here comes the blitz. Fumble. And a fumble. And the Patriots have recovered. Seymour falls on it. On the blitz, it came through clean was Brandon Merriweather. Wallace had no chance. 
Rarely do you see things that are flawless timing. But Brandon Merriweather, Dean Peace calls the blitz, and Merriweather executes it flawlessly. Perfect timing. There is absolutely no way to block him. He comes through, chops down the ball. Seneca Wallace gives it up, and Richard Seymour recovers it. Beautiful defense. I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that, and you have to give credit to the defensive coordinator, Dean Peace, dialing it up, and Merriweather timing it perfectly. And a huge gasp of over 60,000 Seattle partisans that realize now that it's all but academic as the kneel down by Castle, and there's no way to stop the clock for the Seattle Seahawks. Here in Seattle, a dramatic turnabout. Seattle Seahawks, you're looking at Seneca Wallace, the backup quarterback who had a great day, three touchdown passes. The underdog Seahawks, only 2-10 and ten on the season, had the lead throughout. The Patriots scored and converted a two-point conversion here late in the fourth to take the lead 24-21. Then the Seahawks had moved into Patriot territory, had a second and ten. Uh, possible first down away from a field goal that could tie it and a blitz by Merriweather forced a fumble of Wallace covered by Seymour and New England now just with the kneel downs and they're going to scrape out a win when it looked as if they were going to taste an upset today here in Seattle and for those of you expecting to see 60 minutes you're watching the NFL on CBS from Seattle Dick Enberg with Randy Cross 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety immediately following the game except on the West Coast where it'll be seen at its regularly scheduled time well that's a good idea all those new england patriot fans oh. up there just take a deep breath sit down and enjoy great night of tv here on cbs now they kneel down and we're down to the 32nd mark what a game effort by seattle but the new england patriots a big, big win for Bill Belichick. He played with many of his starters injured today. Three went out during the course of the game, and they found a way offensively late, and then a big defensive play at the climax of this game. The two old friends shake hands, and what an AFC East now. New England joins Miami and the Jets all at 8-5 and five with three games to go. Oh, my, what a day in the West. Final score, New England 24, Seattle 21. Tonight, CBS, 60 minutes, amazing race, and a Hallmark Classic front of the class.